Hi, I'm Adam from Messenger Bag Media, a media production agency located in Toronto, Ontario. At Messenger Bag Media, we provide videography, photography, and graphic design services, meaning that we use a lot of different external drives, some being SSDs and some being hard drives. But it's these SSDs that are particularly important because they hold the client project files that we're actively working on. We need easy and reliable access to these at high read and write speeds. To manage all these different drives and to make sure that they're running at the best speeds possible, we use CalDigit docking stations. I won't go into too much detail on these docks in this video, but what's important to know is that these docks have a very fast port selection, Thunderbolt 4 fast, so they certainly shouldn't be bottlenecking the speeds of even our quickest drives. To see our full video review of the CalDigit TS4 and Thunderbolt 4 Pro docks, check out the link in the description. So it goes without saying that because of the services we provide in Messenger Bag Media, we're very particular about the types of drives and docking stations that we buy, making sure that they're not bottlenecking each other and that the speeds that we're working with are usable for our project files. When I recently updated my desk setup, which you can see behind me here, I used the CalDigit docking station to make sure that I was getting the best speeds out of all my drives that I could be and that they all connected to my computer through one cable, which is really convenient. But when I actually started using my desk setup for client work using the CalDigit, I found that a lot of my project files, specifically my Adobe Premiere Pro project files, were really slow. I'd often find them freezing while I was working, just not loading up properly, or crashing, or refusing to save. At first I thought this might be an issue with my actual computer, but I found that if I opened Premiere projects that were stored on other SSDs, they worked fine. So then I thought it might be an issue with my SSD, but when I unplugged it from the back of the CalDigit and plugged it directly into my computer, it started working fine. I then started to consider that maybe it was an issue with the CalDigit. The actual dock itself was working fine. I had other SSDs plugged into different ports, but maybe that particular port was being slow. I unplugged an SSD that I had plugged into a different port that was working fine and plugged it into that port and it continued to work fine. After a lot of troubleshooting and headaches, I realized it was actually a new cable that I had bought, a longer cable, to plug that SSD into the back of my CalDigit. I couldn't use the standard cable that came in the box with the SSD itself because I needed to go from USB-C to USB-A, but for some reason, it was really slowing down my drive. Now, I will note that I bought this cable with the right specs, but it just must have been an issue in inventory, maybe it was mixed up, but the cable was definitely the problem that was causing speed issues. So in this video, I'm gonna save you the headache and give you a straightforward tutorial on how to troubleshoot potential SSD speed issues you might be experiencing. This will be a bit of an elimination process to rule out whether or not it's your computer, your SSD, your docking station, or your cable. So let's jump over to my desk and I'll walk you through this process. So you're having speed issues with a projects file that's located on an external SSD. First, let's make sure this isn't an issue with your computer itself and there's nothing weird going on with your memory or CPU. The best way to do this is going up to the Apple logo in the corner and clicking the shut down option. And when you do that, make sure that this option for reopen windows when logging back in is toggled off. You want this thing to completely shut down, forget what it was doing, and then hopefully that'll solve any issues. But everything was running pretty much fine on my computer, so it's not an issue with my computer. So if everything's fine with your computer, you want to now test your SSD. Before you do that, you want to do some research to make sure you know what speeds these should actually be running at, what the advertised speeds are, because if the drive is just a slow drive, then that might be an issue itself that you weren't aware of when you purchased it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the drive into my CalDigit docking station into the front here. I'd usually have it plugged into the back, but these ports are the same speed, so I'm not really too concerned about it. And then I'm going to run a speed test. The application that I use to run my speed test is Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. It's a free application. We'll have it linked below. Now when you open this up, you're gonna see it almost looks like a car dash and it has read and write gauges to let you know how fast they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the little settings icon here, select this. For stress, I'm gonna put it at five gigabytes of stress. You want this to be really testing this drive as hard as possible. And then I'm going to go to select target drive. The select target drive, I'm gonna select the one that I want, which is the two terabyte SSD, and I'm gonna click open. So now Blackmagic knows that this is the drive it's testing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click start speed test and see what happens. If this is anywhere close to what the advertised speed is, if this is, and the read and write are getting around a thousand megabytes, give or take, um, I'm not gonna to be too concerned. If it's getting 
you know, 700, 800 megabytes, that's gonna be fast enough to be working off of, so I won't be concerned. Let's see how it does. So as you can see right away, this thing is running really, really slow. It's not even gonna complete the right test. I don't even think we'll be able to see read speeds. This is, in all likelihood, it's either an issue with your SSD, with your cable, or with your docking station. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this now because it's not getting anywhere anytime soon. So now if you are using a docking station, you're gonna wanna make sure it's not a problem with your dock or the specific port on your docking station. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unplug the drive from the docking station and plug it directly into my laptop. Now make sure that when you do this swap, you're keeping the same cable. We wanna keep all other variables consistent. The only thing we're changing is that instead of this cable and this SSD being plugged into the dock, it's going straight into my laptop. So let's run that speed test again. If the speeds are running fine now, then we know it's most likely an issue with the dock. In that case, you may need a firmware update or you may just need a new dock completely. We know that the CalDigit supports Thunderbolt 4 and those ports that don't are running at least 10 gigabits per second. So nothing here should be um, from the manufacturer bottlenecking our speeds on these SSDs. Even our fast SSDs should be totally fine. So make sure you know the speeds of all the ports on your dock to eliminate any issues when purchasing. If you're purchasing just a standard USB dock, it might only be giving you five gigabits a second, which would cause some problems for you, especially on faster drives. Same issues, it's still running way too slow. So in all likelihood now, this is not a problem with the dock. Now it still could have a problem with it too, and we'll test that in a minute. But for now, we're gonna assume that it is most likely an issue with the cable I'm using or with the actual SSD itself. And I'm gonna stop this brutal speed test. I got the spinning wheel of death. So now it's time to check the cable. Now this is not the cable that came with the SSD. This is a longer one I want it more reach around from it. The cable that came with the SSD was pretty short, uh, but let's try it with the cable that came with the SSD and see if that makes a difference. Again, now I'm plugging this directly into my computer because I'm trying to keep all other variables consistent. The SSD is the same, the computer is the same. The only thing that's changed is now we're using the cable that came with the SSD. If this does not fix the issue, then we're gonna have to assume that this is a problem with the SSD itself. At that point, you can move your data off the SSD and try reformatting it. And if that doesn't solve the problem, then you may want to actually call the manufacturer or buy a new SSD or, or troubleshoot from there. But at that point, we would know that the issue was on the SSD. So let's run the speed test and see what the issue is. Well, in our case, this clearly solved the problem. We're getting very fast, close to 1,000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. So this leads me to believe that it's most likely been an issue with the cable. And that makes sense because this is an iPhone charging cable and it's not made to transfer data very fast. It's really just made to charge. This is not what I originally used when I was having the speed issues. I used what I believe to be a reputable cable. Uh, but yeah, so a little note, don't use iPhone charging cables to transfer data because they're very slow, clearly. So now, like I said, we're gonna make sure that there's actually not an issue with our dock either. I'm gonna now eject the drive from my computer and I'm gonna plug it back into my CalDigit docking station into the same port that I was using last time when I was having issues. Now I'll run the speed test again and if everything runs fine, then we know there's no issue with the dock, there's no issue with the new cable, there's no issue with the SSD and there's no issue with my computer. And there we go, it's running at the exact same speeds that it was running before. Perfect, no problem with those speeds. So now I know that I either need to use the cable that came with the SSD or buy one that supports the speeds that are advertised with this drive. So I hope you found this helpful. This is really a foolproof way to troubleshoot any speed issues that you may be experiencing on your SSDs and hopefully it helps you find the root of the problem. I just wanted to make this video to save you a headache 
that I experienced trying to figure out what the problem was. I really thought it may have been an issue with the cow digit, but this cow digit dock has not given me any issues whatsoever. It's, it's a, a crucial part of my desk setup. This is not sponsored by cow digit, but just an, an amazing piece of equipment that has really streamlined my workflow. Again, if you want to see that video, check out the link in the description. If you like this video, please give it a like. It goes a long way and it's a great way to support our channel. Check out our channel. We have a bunch of different videos on videography, photography, graphic design, equipment, and tutorials. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Check out these videos here if they look interesting and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.